Hey everybody. So for today's story, I have an NPE story, so not a parent expected story, and this person is looking for her biological father, so welcome back to Lion Stories with Amy. So our client was born in Cleveland, Ohio, and her mom just kind of just said, this guy is your father, and then that's that. And so that's what she was raised with her whole entire life, that that gentleman was her biological father. Her mother was married to him for about six months, and they were divorced before she was even born, before our client was even born. But he went on the birth certificate, he raised the child as his own, Nobody knew any different until she decided to do a Christmas um, DNA test and the results came in and they were a little bit not what they should. So she ended up being what we term a DNA surprise. She took a DNA test and surprise, her dad isn't her dad. And it took her a little while to come to that conclusion because she was like, just, this is weird. Like I see some of these matches, but I don't know who these are. I know my mom's matches, but this isn't adding up. And so it took her a little bit of time going through those matches to finally light bulb go off. Oh my gosh, my dad is not my dad. So she did what a lot of people do who are in that same situation and they turn to support groups and Facebook to figure out how to figure out who her dad is. And in doing so, somebody commented, hey, you need to go see the DNA angels and there was about five comments and she's like, okay, well, I'll see if they, what they can do. So she came to us, we got her matches sorted and taken care of and we were able to identify who her father, birth father was. It was one of four men, which is not ideal. We like it when there's only one son or one daughter when we're looking for a birth mother. We like it when it's that easy and you don't have to sit there and try to get someone to target test or admit that they were with your parent, your other parent, in this case, the mom. So it was one of four brothers and so we get contact information for each one of those brothers. We get contact information for all of their children that we could find and identify. And so we had to leave it into her hands, see if somebody would either say, hey, yeah, I remember your mom or your mom says, oh yeah, I remember him or get somebody to start target testing one by one in each of those lines to eliminate them. For her, she had to go the harder route. Nobody admitted to anything. Mom still isn't believing that the DNA results were true. She still says that the husband that she divorced six months into their marriage is the biological father and nobody else could be it. There's no possibility, even though we have the DNA evidence that says otherwise. Each one of those four men says they don't remember mom. They are happy to help, reluctant in a way, but they're, they're trying their best to help. So one by one, they start to DNA test and they don't even DNA test all at the same time. It's literally staggered. The first one that tests comes back as an uncle. The second one that tests comes back as an uncle. The third one, and finally, he was the biological father. He was a little shocked. He did not expect it to be him. He thought it was going to be his younger brother, but he still was on board for the whole situation, didn't shut it down. He was very, very shocked about the whole thing, but he is accepting and they are slowly treading these waters of trying to learn who each other are. They don't really have a relationship. I don't think I would call it a relationship at this point. They're learning who they are as people, just as people to begin with. What are their likes? What are their dislikes? And they text each other about maybe once a month, once every two months or so. And there's like, hey, just check it in. How is everything? Or the birth father will be like, hey, I hope everything's great. Um, this happened today at work. I thought I would share it with you. So they're, they're treading the waters and trying to learn about each other, which is really, really sweet. It's not like a, oh my God, this happy ending and sunshine and rainbows because this is life, y'all. It's not how it always is. And this one's, this one's still a good story. I didn't have to send confetti. They were really, really kind to her, which I appreciated. And I know our client appreciated. But that is it for today. Don't forget to hit like, follow, and share. And I'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody.